Well, a few weeks ago, Dagmar showed us how Navy search and rescue swimmers do technical training in swimming pools. Well, today, Dagmar shows us the next step to the training. Oh, you know, just jumping out of <laughs> helicopters into the ocean. Basic stuff, things they do every day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody goes through a lot of training for their job. All of us know what that's like. But few people train like Navy search and rescue swimmers. When they are called into action, SAR swimmers, they head out to save people in downed aircrafts or sinking ships. And their work environment is high stress. It's really risky. And it is fast paced, just like their training. A Navy SAR swimmer training group and me on a boat in the San Diego Bay. We're headed out to watch search and rescue swimmer training. And this is what we saw. the aircraft at a 10 and 10 <laughs> into the water recovering the personnel water Jump. becomes concrete <laughs> at 10 knots it begins to become painful the higher you go a free falling 10 and 10 is one way for SAR swimmers to get in the water here's the other way so this is called a direct deployment the hero has to hover at a solid 70 feet above the surface of the water our swimmer off and then we'll come up into a hover and then at that point it's all on the rescue swimmer to do his thing. Once you get down into the water you're working scores from over. They say being in the water is by far the most difficult part of it. It's like a hurricane below the aircraft, you know, there's a lot of down wash, water wash. Visibility is pretty uh, bad. It's quite challenging. If things get a little bit uh, dicey when the waves kind of come up, white caps will look like guys' helmets. So if somebody falls off the ship and they're wearing a cranial, their cranial will look just like a white cap. There's just always the concern for making sure that the swimmers are uh, safe at all times. Attention to detail and procedures need to be adhered to because if it's not done, injuries can happen or occur. For a standard uh, SAR crew, it will be four people. Uh, two pilots, someone hoisting, and then the rescue swimmer jumping. That's the human element needed for rescues. But what about the SAR transport machine? To get to where they need to get in a hurry, Navy search and rescue swimmers rely on these MH-60s. At 19,000 pounds, they can get to where they need to go at over 200 miles an hour. Between the helicopter's two pilots, the hoister and the rescue swimmer, the four crew members will have combined for hundreds of hours of training before deploying for their first actual rescue mission. So the reason why we train is so that way when an actual scenario happens, that there's no new surprises and that we're prepared for whatever happens. So all the chaos is kind of brought down to a minimum because we've been training and preparing for it. Of course, all this training is done for one reason and one reason only. It's to save lives. For those stranded in the water, SAR swimmers are often the difference between life and death. It gives you kind of euphoria. You, just can't, uh, you can't explain when you actually save a life. And it just kind of validates everything we do every day, all the hours we put into it, and the reason why we started this job. Providing for others, you know, so others may live, search and rescue. Oh, I loved every minute of my day with those guys out on the bay. I wanted to jump, but they made me stay in the safety of the boat. For more stories like this, visit Down to Earth. Just go to the NBC7 website. All you have to do is search Down to Earth when you're there.